Hello, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. How are you? Nice. Very nice. Uh, I would like to ask audience if you can hear Victor as well, okay? Victor, speak a little bit just okay. to understand. Hello, guys. I'm Victor from Brazil. It's a huge pleasure to be with Maxim in this, uh, in his yeah, channel. Yeah, so they can hear you. Perfect. So, it will be awesome. Perfect. So, I will switch off comments because I would like to see you and uh, to focus on, on our conversation. So, I will switch off comments. If you will have, guys, any questions, you can write down your questions in special Instagram form. And at the end of our conversation with Victor, if we will have time, but I think we will have some time to, to answer your questions as well. So nice to, he, to, to see you again. Uh, last time we met in, uh, in, in Kiev, Kiev, I think, uh, a year ago or two years ago, right? I think two years, so it's not, probably, yeah. Two years ago. Yeah, so now, it's, now it is not that easy to travel, to see, but because of the Instagram, we can actually communicate, you see, with no limits and no borders, which is amazing nowadays. Victor, my friend, I saw your article, I think it was published in uh, QDT, right? About non-PREF veneers. Yes, we, we oh. published in 2016. Uh, but, but we have been working with non-PREF veneers, I, myself, since 2004. Wow, so you have okay. a oh, huge experience around 16 years but why that you know that here we have amazing dental technicians exactly brazil is very famous with this and, and uh, uh, they love will geller so probably geller start to show no prep veneers a long time ago so they follow him and we start to try and also we have old school professors, like we say old school, but in that time they are like kilometers are red because they start to show us no prep veneers. So in Brazil, we have uh, amazing routes and bases to perform the no prep veneers. And probably we won't publish this before. First, because the language. I think like in Ukraine also, uh, in Brazil, it's not easy to perform a paper for the people that are starting. Imagine like 20 years ago. Now, everybody can speak English, the, the young guys and everything. But I think the past was difficult. And also the papers was uh, a bit closed than now. But we, we have mm -hmm. uh, amazing, probably, groups about no prep vineyards. Yeah, that's fine. This is what I would like to discuss with you and to share your knowledge and experience with audience and with myself as well, because I don't have a lot of experience with non-prep veneers. I have few cases and I faced with some difficulties actually performing that type of dentistry, especially when you bond these non-prep really tiny and thin veneers and then you polish the transition between the tooth and the veneer, so that is pretty difficult to obtain a very nice and super fine margin between. So first question that I would like to ask with you, uh, to discuss with you is uh, case selection. In which case we can do non-prep? In which case we have to do some sort of preparation? Okay, uh, we have to understand first, uh, to perform no prep veneers with ceramics, okay? Or we can say no prep veneers, and also we can place partial veneers in the in the or same. partial veneers. Okay? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, every time that you have something that you not prep before, your dental technician. I think is the first selection. You have to have a, a champion, uh, some, someone that has a lot of experience with that. Okay, for sure. Why? Because we suppose that for no prep veneers is 
additive case, you will place volume. So which case that you want to perform no prep veneers? Case that you need to place volume. So which case? Diastemas, uh, conoids, probably a little bit uh, flat teeth that we can make a little bit convex, teeth that we can increase the length, uh, canine guidance, fractures. We can perform something that it's not prep, but we have a difference between that case is that you will do no prep with composite and with ceramics is the path of insertion and the path of insertion is the key point to perform a no prep veneer or partial veneer that then you will figure out with retentions or not if you perform composite straight in the mouth you there is no path of insertion you just add but the dental technician right. need the path of insertion. The huge problem is to understand how I can know if I have path of insertion or not. Okay? If you are working with CAD CAN, with some CAN design, you can understand, you can see the path of insertion but probably you will do something that it's monolithic. And the problem to do partial veneers or no prep sometimes, but more partial at that you have to polish afterwards and then you will lose some uh, staining or some thing that create nature. And for us to have a nature, no prep veneers or natural, no prep veneers or partial veneers is feldspatics that we can do on top of refractory dime material. Yeah. But the problem or platinum, is foil, platinum foil. Platinum foil. In Brazil, we don't have platinum foil, so sorry. Yeah, but so I would have... like just to, uh, to, uh, to recap this information to the audience because we have actually two ways to perform really thin and, 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 uh, and super fine. Uh, non prep or partial veneers utilizing feldspatic layered ceramic on refractory dye or on platinum foil. There are two techniques that allow you to do this. Yes, and uh, the problem when you do the partial veneers or the contact lens in the refractory dye, that the dental technician will add the ceramics and he will just understand the path of insertion after he removes from the dye and then he tried to fit in the stone model. And then he will say, oh no, I don't have path insertion. Maybe I try to place, I will break. Or I will cut off some edge and I will create a gap, a huge gap. So this kind of uh, understanding between dental technician and dentist will take time. We made a lot of mistakes in the past Sometimes we can also perform, but we have experience because we made a lot of mistakes. So case selection, try to understand case that you can add volume. Okay, this is easy, but then you have to understand the path of insertion of your veneer or partial veneer. Sometimes he will try to perform a veneer, no prep veneer, and he will send to you a partial veneer. He will say, ah, oh, it's better partial because he break the, the, the veneer while mm. he start to find the path. Well, he tried to fit the veneer on the, yeah. on the cast model. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens when dental technician tries to fit the veneer on the model. Yeah. Sometimes it happens when you try in veneer in the patient's mouth. And afterwards, you will have partial veneer. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. this of communication... It's painful, with, painful. Uh, you know, in the lab, if you have a thin margin... If he just plays a little bit like uh, strength, he can cut off the stone. But in the mouth, we cannot, like with these sharp ceramics, cut off the enamel. So th there are problems. If the dental technician is smart, he can remove a little bit the, from the stone and tell you, look, it's perfect. It's your impression. So it, it's... I would uh, like just to show to the audience, partial veneer is like this. It's a, it's a part. Yeah. 
It's not a full laminate. It's just a part of ceramic that substitutes some portions of the teeth, as Victor mentioned, like a diastema or making some volume or adding some incisal areas if teeth are broken you or you're making them longer or whatever. Yes, I, okay. I feel like I will turn off a little bit. So we, we can work with no prep. We will say no prep restorations with ceramics because we can work for aesthetics, fracture, diastemas, canoid. We can work with function for canine guidance. Sometimes the guide uh, lose the first or second molar. The ortho try to move the third molar. We not achieve like a, a good outcome. So you can make an only, no prep only. Yeah, tabletop have, restoration, occlusal veneer. Yes, occlusal veneer. We, we have different situations that we can work with this kind of indications. Usually, uh, everything that we can do with no prep uh, veneers, we can do also with composite. Yeah, so perfect. if we start to talk, which one? Should I choose composite or partial veneer in ceramics? So it will be like a nightmare. And this is kind of uh, dentist dependent. One works better with composite. The other ones have a good ceramics that will work better with uh, ceramics. So indication. You can add volume and you have to understand path of insertion. Then material. You have to understand that everything that you do, monolithic, uh, the problem of monolithic, different thickness with the same material, you will have different color. Different then, optics, right. Yes, different optics. So if you are doing just an additive case, sometimes your tooth is a little bit rotated like you have more volume in the mesial and less volume in the distal. And then you will have different optical uh, interference. The field the advantage that the dental technician can layer and he can compensate that. But in the field paddocks, you cannot like guess the path to insertion if you don't have experience in the CAD can or when you are waxing manual to press, you can see if broke or not. So the decision of materials, one you have more aesthetics, another one you have more strength. It's like, which are your patient, how your dental technician works. I prefer, if I will perform no prep veneers, aesthetics, Smile filled paddocks. This is my first choice. I will just do no prep restorations. Monolithic for function. Came for posterity. Posterior. Or for palatal side. Yeah. Yes. But they have to understand sometimes if you perform, I will find an I image that you will like. If you perform no prep veneer as a canine guidance or partial veneer like this that I did lithium disilicate. Mm -hmm. If you don't explain for the patient, if you not polish well, look what can happen in the antagonist. It's not fracture. We start to wear the opposite, the lower. So in this so, case, you have added ceramic on palatal aspect of upper teeth, right? Yes, in the palatal part. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, got and it. And we perform a canine guidance. With and then it abraded the antagonist. And we had wear mm. in the antagonist. So also, when you work with function, you can have problems about materials. And this, you will just understand when you start to see your patient after five years, 10 years, a lot of stuff like that. Sometimes after one year. Yes. If you made a big mistake, big mistakes can be visible in short term. In short. But, 
small mistakes, they will be accumulated in time and after two, three, four, five years, you'll see them. Okay, yeah. so let me just shortly recap the information mm -hmm. that we already discussed with you to the audience. Uh, we raised up a question regarding indications or case selection for uh, non prep veneers. And if we talk about anterior teeth aesthetics, you can do uh, non prep veneers if you have a possibility to add some volume above the frontal area of, of anterior teeth. For example, if teeth are slightly retroclined, okay, or they are plain, so there is no texture, there is no volume on the surface, and you can make this slightly more natural looking, let's say. Then you can, you can do partial veneers in case when you have diastema to close diastema, okay? Then you can also do non-prep veneers uh, in anterior region when you have so-called peg lateral incisors or conics, con conical teeth, okay? And uh, for anterior teeth, but more in terms of function, you can also do some additive or non-prep or minimal prep, but we're discussing now non-prep from palatal side. If you will need to compensate or to increase, for example, canine guidance or anterior movements for, for a central lateral incisor. So basically you can do so-called non-prep veneers in that case. In terms of function in posterior teeth, we can also do so-called non-prep restorations like tabletop or occlusal veneers when you rise a video, for example, or you will try to compensate some treatments after orthodontic treatment. Okay, so in this case, we can go for so-called non-prep veneers, but material for frontal teeth, when you are aiming to have a really high aesthetics, will be given into feldspatic ceramic because as Victor said, it is more beautiful, more natural looking because dental technician can add uh, different layers of ceramic playing with the dentin shades, with the opaque, with the enamel. But if we will do monolithic, milled or pressed ceramic in anterior teeth, it will be pretty difficult to achieve proper optical integration because uh, when you have different thickness in material, I mean, in monolithic material, you will have different optics, which is difficult to manage in terms of color integration. For posterior teeth, it is not a big problem. For anterior teeth, especially when you do so-called partial veneers, it will be super difficult to match the color utilizing monolithic restorations um, by the static means. Okay, yes. so let's go. <laughs> This video is about benefits that you will have from our online workshop. Presence Effect. This is a unique feature by Belgrade Academy that literally moves you to our training center and you can stay close to speaker. This is like over shoulder format. The training process is filmed through the video system from the microscope and there are two more cameras, broadcasting close up and general view. This way you can see everything in precise details. Efficiency. Do you agree guys that over shoulder workshop with detailed video and explanation is way better than regular slides? The third benefit is convenience. So basically you don't need to go anywhere and you can study in comfort conditions. In your home, in your office, during running exercises, from your phone, from your computer, from your tablet, and you can do anything you want with the content. So join us as we shifted online education into the next level. And just one, I, I would, would like to add just one more tip. Sometimes if we have teeth that has a lot of texture, probably the dental technician will not cop that texture because it's difficult to fit in the texture. He will add some waft or he will create some space uh, to, to have more space for the resin cement. And sometimes the resin cement, if your veneer is too thin, can change the color. Or also, if your resin cement is thicker than your veneer, we can have some contraction and right. we can see after, after we light cure some fractures. So we are not 
telling for the people that partial veneer is bad. But partial veneer or no prep veneers, they are attractive because you can think, okay, we can just take an impression and done, and we will can easy, bond with Easy over. money for dentist. Easy. But that kind of dentist that want to perform that, sometimes he's not so experienced. So he thinks that it's easy. When we don't have knowledge, we think that everything is easy. But then you will see the problems afterwards. Nowadays, for me to perform partial veneer, have to be the perfect case with the best dental technician, with all my knowledge and time. For me, it's 10 times worse or difficult to perform a no prep veneers than a prep veneer. So they, they have to understand that. In the beginning, I did a lot because I was a little bit like dumb or dumb without knowledge. So I think everything is easy. Nowadays, I have to discuss a lot with the patient and show the advantage and disadvantage. And I can find more disadvantage and just a few advantages. So for me, the patient that will deserve a no prep veneer nowadays probably is one and 100, okay? And the majority of patients, I have to slice a little bit to round some corner and I have to find path of insertion because to prep like a knife edge and do no prep is completely different. Both will have uh, like thin margin, but it's different to have knife edge and space than no prep. Yeah, for sure. I would like also to add something in, in that uh, conversation because you rise up actually a very important issue about spacer and biomechanical properties. Uh, biomechanical properties actually but from ceramic and composite resin cement basically it, it is composite so what is what is super important to understand sometimes we may have these ugly cracks on our veneers it doesn't matter if it is non-prep or it is minimal prep let's say we if we have really thin veneers to be bonded but if the surface of the tooth was not uniform and smooth. If you will have a scratches or waves, okay, or some undercuts, these imperfections out of the surface, your dental technician will compensate with spacer, okay? So that spacer will create space between veneer and the tooth. And afterwards, okay, so it's like that. And afterwards, when you will bond your veneer to the surface of the tooth, Literally, you will bond your veneer not to enamel. You will bond your veneer to the thick layer of composite cement. And the problem of the composite cement is that it shrinks during polymerization and the forces during shrinkage are really strong. And sometimes it may lead to create a fracture just during light curing. Or if it, it would not happen, for example, during light curing, it may occur after time because the module of elasticity of ceramic is pretty much the same as enamel, but the material is pretty brittle. And when you have composite with a different module of elasticity, composite is more flexible, okay? So basically under thin portion of brittle ceramic veneer, there is something that is really flexible. And when there is a function, when patient bites, speaks or whatever, there is some slight um, the flexural deformations under veneer that may lead to create a fracture line on the veneer after time. So you have to be super careful with the surface of patient's teeth to perform thin veneers. I'm talking this because I'm not discussing right now just non-prep veneers. You have to be super careful even when you do prep veneers, when you prepare a surface of patient's teeth, the surface has to be perfect. It is, I, I'm always telling this, that uh, the fit of veneer, the thin veneer, is way more important to be perfect on the surface even than to the finish line, okay? Because we really focus on the finish line preparations when we do preps. But I'm always teaching this and I'm always telling to my, my, my colleagues that you have to take a, a good care on all over the surface because that is 
way important than finish line. Finish line is also important, but the per surface fit is one of the most important things in minimal invasive dentistry with, with, a, with a thin restoration. Yes, about finishing line, I don't know if you will ask, but they, they, they have to understand that every time that you work with something that it's no prep, okay, uh, the dental technician, sometimes he will send with a little bit more volume and then sometimes you will finish in the mouth, okay? And usually you will... Uh, probably see some lines and that lines if we see this kind of video when we start to turn a little bit you can see that what is ceramics what is the resin cement and what is the, the teeth so the problem will happen in this area that it's resin cement or composite okay Probably if you have composites, better than resin cement, but also to bond something too thin with a composite, it's not easy. So these kind of situations, uh, you have to understand. If your dental technician has a lot of accuracy with the, the work, he can send your no prep veneer almost with 0 0.12, but he, the guy has to be like magician. And then you will just polish. But if he sand with a lot of volume, you will place the burr. And we will place the burr. After we remove the volume, you will find like a thick area of resin cement. And then the problem will start. And about yeah, margins, the problems of I don't know if you, if you like, uh, like more chamfer or knife edge to veneers. But then afterwards, we, I can ask to you yeah, which yeah. one you Yeah, prefer. I would like also to... Uh, you you asking? This is the question. I prefer. No no no. We we it, it, we will continue with that, right? So let me also uh, show this to um, to our our audience because, as you said, a dental technician with non so called non prep veneers will add a little bit extra overhang of ceramic. So that overhang of ceramic will be given to you for for um, polishing the transition actually between ceramic veneer. And, uh, and, and the tooth, but you have to be super careful and you have to understand, this is just right after cementation, that you will always, always have visible transition between ceramic and the tooth because of optical difference, because of the different index of refraction, okay? So I'm saying this because I tried to do several non-prep cases or par partial veneer cases. And I, I was upset because uh, before I started, actually, I saw some magical cases from Facebook or from Instagram, from other people. And I was really crazy about that. And I said to myself and to my dental technician, let's try. We have to do the same. But when I anal analyzed pictures of somebody from the social media, I didn't see the transition. But when I bonded these restorations to the patient's teeth, and when I took uh, a macro picture, or I saw it with microscope when teeth are dry, I was able to see the transition. And I was really super crazy about that because I was trying to polish with the discs, with the rubbers, with the pastes, with everything. Then I took another appointment to polish again, and, and then I failed. And I said to myself, I, I cannot do anything, anything else. And then I read afterwards that you will see different when teeth are dry from the macro view because of the different, different index of refraction. And another thing that may happen, this is what you said, actually. When you polish ceramic transition and uh, ceramic tooth transition, you may expose some areas of, of resin cement, actually. And after time, it may be discolorated. So basically, you have to, to understand this issue also, because after one, two years, your patient may come back to your office with a slight brown stain around the, uh, the transition, and you have to understand why it happens. I, one tip that I would like to, to, to share is that you said a very important thing that composite 
filled material is better than regular resin cement in terms of color and surface stability. But if you have this 0.1 or 0.2 veneer, it is impossible to utilize normal packable composite, even preheated to bond these restorations because they will break because you have to apply certain forces. But to avoid this nowadays, fortunately, we have really good materials that are some, some, somewhere between highly filled or packable normal restorative composites and resin cements. We call them highly filled flowable composites. Like for example, Genial Universal Flow from GC or, or we have um, uh, many companies that actually produce, for example, Mycerium from Italy, they have enamel HRI flowable mm -hmm. composites that are highly filled. And actually these companies, they say that you can utilize these flowable composites as final restorative composites for small cavity. So basically you can do class one restoration with that type of composite, or you can do class three res final restoration with that composite. That means that this composite can resist environment and uh, the color stability of this composite and polishing stability of this composite is pretty high. Actually, they, they can be compared with microfills in terms of biomechanical properties. So these are, these are composites that I'm using for all of my veneers, not just non-prep veneers. I, I cement all my veneers with highly filled flowable composites. And if I will have some imperfection in fit or I have to compensate something with composite, it will work because I can polish this composite for the mirror mirror look, look and it will be super, super nice. Sorry. No, yeah, I agree with you. I and... talk too much. <laughs> no, no, no. About the, I always say to my students or friends that this is a perfect example what you said before. I have a no prep veneer in the lateral and also I have a partial veneer in the canine, okay? So this is from my, my like lecture. You can see, what is the no prep veneer? Okay, this is why I have this kind of interface because I know how to hide these with pictures. I've been taking pictures since the 2001. So I know, I know the secrets, but this is the reality, the same case, okay? So, so I, I, I can, Send, uh, maybe I can sell to you my partial veneer or the reality. Okay, so the, these usually the, the students will see this and they maybe will get a little bit frustrated. Okay, but it's normal to see the, the margins. And another stuff that you mentioned before, we did a kind of in vitro study with uh, USC in, with Professor Dr. Duarte. And I can see this sometimes in my partial veneers. After this, we have seven years, okay? Seven years of this kind of staining. And the same case, this is close to the tissue, the, the gingival margin. In the same case, close to the incisal edge, we don't have any staining. And also we did some micros and some SAMs to see what happened. So areas that the patient cannot like brush well, areas that I didn't polish well in that I can have this kind of staining because we cannot hear you. Victor? We we'll lose, we we'll lose your voice. I cannot hear you. Can you speak again? Now we come back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There was no sound. We have. Okay. But this kind of area that the patient can also brush well you can see that we don't have any staining. So uh, this we have to take care. And we, the one thing that I can maybe uh, share with them that it's a nice tip 
First, when you design a partial veneer, you have to talk with your dental technician to place the interface far from the line angles. Otherwise, you have like two line angles and with the, the light and everything will show a little bit weird. So you have to plan the location of your interface. Your interface should be, if it's possible, with curves, not like straight. So your dental technician also can do some illusion. Another thing, when you start to maybe polish or finishing the interface and, and face and then polish, you have to understand that it's better to start with your uh, rubber, with your rubber or um, no, burr. You have to start perpendicular from your interface. If you start too much parallel, you can damage and you can create a concavity. If you work like perpendicular, you can finish better. But sometimes with the handpiece, you cannot achieve that. And when you cannot achieve that, you have tried to work always from the ceramics to the enamel. If you start to work enamel to ceramics, sometimes you do a little bit strength and you will create also a concavity. So first, classify your interface try to work perpendicular, and if it's not possible, ceramics to teeth. This, so this is, is like- This is the that direction, yeah. I always follow to create the, the, the finishing and polish. And then if I work with field paddocks, I sometimes go straight with rubbers, rubbers for ceramics. But if I'm working with lithium disilicate, then sometimes I need burrs. And when you have to use burrs, you will create roughness and then you have to polish a lot. And the problem to polish a lot ceramics in the mouth that you will hit your tooth and then you can have sensitivity. And you say, oh my God, I work with no prep veneers on top of enamel. And why the patient is complaining? Because you hit. So it, it's crazy. You have to understand all these steps and it's not just to bone, no? Yeah, too many things to take into consideration. You're completely right. Yeah. Uh, do you have any preferable instruments to have uh, polishing of ceramics in patients' mouths? What is uh, your favorite? Yeah, my, my, I, I like additive to buy every material to finish ceramics. I love like some women like bags, some ones like cars. <laughs> I love like dental instruments. I think you the same. And I've been testing a lot. For me, all good brands like uh, Edenta, Shofu, um, a lot of, we have a lot of brands from Germany, then all works. I think that the clinician, he has to have different kind of tips with different shapes because Sometimes you need the brown points. So instead of like uh, trying to understand which one is the better brand, if you work with a good brand, try to have different shapes. And for me, this is more important the shapes than the brand. And uh, you have to understand that you have a sequence and each system will have a sequence. And you have to understand when you use with more roughness, less roughness, and then you have to create the, the, the shine to, to shine. I, I forgot the name in English, like when we have to place the glaze, the polish with the, the hands. And when you start to polish, sometimes we try to polish too much the partial veneer or the veneer, and we will shine more than the tooth. And sometimes to compensate this, instead of to polish too much the ceramics, start to polish the tooth. And then you achieve some uh, compatibility. And you have to polish also adjacent teeth sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes the guy is freaking just to polish the ceramics. It's not. You have to polish the other. Like I, I had a case one time when I bonded to central incisors, partial veneers, and I polished like a crazy and I was able to take selfie from these central incisors. But laterals, <laughs> laterals 
were not that shiny. And patient was like uh, like shocked. He, he said, now I need to put veneers on my latch or inside of the head. No, 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 wait. We'll just polish them with a paste and you'll be happy with your own teeth. And it fixed the problem. Okay, perfect. So yeah, you're right. You have to have different uh, shapes of instruments to polish. And actually I asked my dental technician to send me the same instruments that he uses for ceramic polishing, which is not so easy to utilize in patient's mouth for sure, but sometimes we can. And also he sent me paste, uh, the paste that he uses to polish ceramic, which is super important, okay? Perfect, yeah, so. And uh, they are different between field spadics, lithium disilicate, so you sure, have to- For have sure, for yeah. And you, feldspatic ceramics, actually, you can you can even polish uh, with the soft flex discs. Yeah. Not completely, but then after you have to use paste, but lithium desilicate with discs. No. And another possible. thing that the guys that are following us, they have to understand when you finish veneers, no prep or normal veneers, when you remove the resin cement or the flow of the excess, if you want to polish the margin, it's better to polish with composite rubbers, not with ceramics. Otherwise, you can remove the glaze and also you can damage the interface. Because I've seen a lot of people, and I'm just finishing or polishing my interface with ceramic rubber for ceramics or tips. I would prefer to work more with composite okay. rubbers to finish that interface. If I need to remove or touch or if I touch with some burr, then I use ceramics. But my first thing just to polish is with a composite set. Yeah, perfect. And, and uh, also one tip, if you will have composite cement overhang and you have to, to cut this overhang of composite out is and you are not able to do this with the rubber efficiently or you will have to use rubber for a long time, and you would like to, to accelerate, to speed up, you can use a special, um, how do you call it? Multi-bladed burrs, like a carbide mm. burrs that orthodontists use when they remove braces, for example, to take out some, some, some glue from the teeth. So in this case, with a low speed, you can take out the overhang with these multi-bladed burrs. They are not, they are, they're also, you have to be very careful because they can damage the, the, the polishing area of ceramic. But if we will compare multi-bladed burr with a, with a diamond burr, there are two big differences. So multi-bladed yeah. burr, if you will accidentally touch ceramic, it may not scratch ceramic that much as diamond, even white or yellow will do with a ceramic. So you have to have these instruments in your armamentarium. Victor, you are yeah, able I, to, I would... you are going to ask about finish line. Or what? Yeah, no, I, I will just add a little bit, like, look this kind of surface. We did some SAMs, okay? And we measure the enamel is the first one, surface. So we will see that the enamel has a, like a roughness with 0 0.45, okay? Just a number, 0 0.45. The ceramics, they have a better surface than enamel, 0 0.34, okay? Okay. So if we touch with burr, we will have this kind of number, like a lot of roughness. And you can see in that image without burr and with burr. And then you have to understand if you have like uh, something that it's pressed, something that it's pressed, probably they have the surface better than field paddocks. Why? Because when we have like something that is pressed or handmade, we have bubbles and the glaze will cover the bubbles. But when you touch with the burr, probably you will expose the bubbles and that bubbles can have some staining. So the problem to touch the ceramics is that we will remove the glaze. And then the CAD can materials, they have better surface, but less optical proper properties. So this is a kind of difficult to decide, no? If we think 
in vivo look in the mouth, the field particles is better color, etc. But if we go to the lab and we start to see the surface, sure that everything that we knew has better surface after we touch. So they, they have to understand that every time that you touch, you will have problems. And sure that after you polish, you can maybe uh, balance the surface, but you will not achieve the glaze surface. And then if your ceramics has a lot of bubbles, you have more plaque that can uh, be in the, the, the surface and you can have problems. So it's a nightmare talking about finishing. <laughs> <laughs> intra world yeah enhance yeah. it's easier for sure okay so uh, I would like to say that um, if we will do some summary and personal preferences in uh, aesthetic dentistry non-prep or minimal prep veneers my personal preference because actually I, I asked this, uh, this question uh, on my Instagram stories and there were a lot of people that that do not prefer to do minimally invasive, or sorry, they do not prefer to do non-prep uh, veneers because of two reasons. The first reason was that they don't have enough experience. And uh, another reason was that they do prefer to do some minimal slight adjustments or preparation. So actually this is my preference also. And I would like to explain why. It's because of the optical difference between ceramic and tooth. And as we actually discussed, it's so difficult to, to match this transition to make it solid and smooth between ceramic and tooth. So this is the, 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 the problem number one. The problem number two is pathway of insertion. Actually, this is the major problem, pathway of insertion. So with a minor adjustments, we don't tell this preparation to the patient. I'm saying to my patient, I will do some adjustments. I Perfect. will do some contouring. I will do some slight contouring. If I'm working with a diamond to make it, you know, like a brilliant. So this is what I'm explaining to my patient. I will just do some adjustment to perform and to obtain a really nice and, and easy pathway of insertion. And another reason is when we do veneers, not partial, but let's say the, the whole surface to be laminated. It is so difficult for dental technicians to understand where to start or where to finish the veneer. And also, when I will have this veneer from dental lab, for me, it's so difficult to position this veneer sometime on the surface because I have no references. Sometimes I can just place it like this or I can just move it a few microns away and I may, may lose some aesthetic angles or whatever. And... If your dental technician, for example, decided to do veneer slightly subgingival because you are able to do a good impression and your dental technician now has this space to layer ceramic there, it will be not easy for you to isolate the case. If you are a big fan of rubber dam isolation, it will be difficult for you to isolate and then it will be difficult for you to position. So my personal preference, I do prefer to do a little finish line just a small one it's like you know zero one zero two zero three it depends what kind of dental technician you have if you have a champion with integrated microscope you can do zero one but it's difficult for them just to to finish them you know i have a funny story with my dental technician when i um, when i started to work with microscope uh it was a period of time like a like 10 or nine years ago, it was a period of time in Instagram or Facebook when everybody competed each other in terms whose finish line is smaller. <laughs> and it was amazing cases like, you know, zero one with a two, 20 times magnification and be, wow, finish line, crazy, nice. How did you perform this finish line? But to be honest, when you have microscope, when you have electric handpiece, when you have stable hands, it is possible. It is not that difficult to perform 0.1 finish line when you have certain skills and abilities and equipment, but you cannot even imagine how difficult it is to perform a good fit for you by your dental technician when he has the 0.1 from your side. 
And one day I came to my dental technician in his lab. Okay. He's a tall guy, a huge one. And I was, I saw him almost crying. I said, what happens with you? What happens with you? And he gave me a veneers that he was going to, uh, to make to, for me, for my patient. He gave me these veneers and said, take and try now to polish your marginal area. Try to polish yourself. I said, look, I'm, exp I'm expert. I did a lot of direct composite restorations. I work with microscope. I can polish everything. So when I took this veneer in my hands and I was just touching with a, with a rubber or with a brush even, and there's a small, the small piece of ceramic was chipped off from the margin. You know, it's like a rough margin. I was saying to myself, wow, it's so, it's so crazy. Uh, how can he do this every time? Because I gave him a lot of cases like this with a 0.1 finish line. Once I tried to perform a fit or polishing by myself, I said to myself then, next day, that, that now I will start to do a little bit thicker finish line. If we have a case, like young patient, or doesn't matter. Let's say we have enamel still in cervical area. We have enamel. It, is, it doesn't matter if you will have 0, 01 or 0, 03 in enamel. But it matters a lot for dental technician when you have 0, 01 or 0, 03 because it's way more easier and more predictable and more convenient for your dental technician to perform fit and finishing of 0, 03 margin than 0 0.1. So nowadays I do a lot of 0, 02, 0, 03, let's say. This is the average finish line that I do for, for uh, regular patients. For sure, sometimes yeah. if I see that the enamel is really thin in cervical area, I see this with optics, with a microscope. In this case, I can do this knife edge or uh, I, let's say knife edge for me is like a 0, 01 actually. Mm -hmm. So I do this slight 0, 01 just to keep enamel. And then I, I I give to my dental technician a lot of presents, whiskey, vodka, you know, everything to make him happy <laughs> because he has to perform the 0 0.1 finish line. Yeah, and, and these kind of uh, things, I, I, I did the same in Brazil. We know we are competing which one has the, the last preparation and craze. But now we understand. But that time, maybe we, we were young and we know yeah. we, we are... I'm trying to find it this line. But another thing that I tell for the guys that you have to understand how your dental technician can add volume on the gingival third. Because sometimes you can perform 0.1, but your veneer can have 0.5. Why? Because we can add volume. So depends of the thickness of your tissue depends of the kind of pile type and also the tooth position. And sometimes if you graft before and then you can have more volume. This is the same idea or you can see this clear for the guys in the BOPT technique. Because the BOPT technique, the BOPT, they reduce all things, but they have a thick contour because they have now a thick tissue. So sometimes you can prep 0 0.1, but your veneer will have 0 0.5. Sometimes you have prep 0 0.3 and you will have 0 0.3. So you have to understand how much volume you can add. And the problem, I don't know if you have the same, Maxim, that if you send your wax up for two dental technicians and say, just add volume, following your like feeling, each one will walk completely different, the buccal surface, and they will give different volumes. So if you have a guy that like convex teeth, always you, you can say that you are no prep guy. But if you have a guy that like flat, <laughs> oh no, I have to prep. So sometimes we are talking with guys and you have to understand how is your dental technician shapes or how you design in the, the software how your idea, how is the position. So it's a lot of variables that you can understand. And another thing that I cannot understand is one guy show me, okay, I have a groove, a depth of 0 0.3. I did with the burr. 
and I finish with 0 0.3. So he's magician because your burr will create some scratch and when you prep and polish, you have at least 0 0.5 or 6. So if you want to prep 0 0.1, probably don't do any sulcus and uh, death or groove. You have to just prep. If you want 0 0.5, do your measure with 0 0.3. So these are things that the guys that are seeing, they have to understand. Always you prep more than the grooves than that you did the, the, before. Yeah, you, the, the exact finish line may be 0 0.3, but the rest will be more than 0 0.3 for sure. Otherwise, if you want to keep everything 0 0.3, you will tell... You'll take your burr, this is tooth, this is burr, this way, and you will have undercut. And then you will have U margin, and then you will have another type of problems during the communication with your dental technician. Yeah, but sometimes when people say it's veneer, I just 0 0.1 prep or 0 0.3 prep, exactly, you are, you're completely right. It's not 0 0.3. Your finish line is 0 0.3. But the rest of surface, slightly more. I don't know how much, but it, it will obviously because the burr will be given, will be directed like this. So here is 0 0.3, but here is slightly more. But when you incline your burr, you will have more preparation than 0 0.3. It, actually, it's not a big problem. S since you decided to prep the tooth, you have to prep to get a really good result. And uh, for sure, we would like to keep as much, as much enamel as possible. If you do 0 0.3 finish line in cervical area, for sure you have thicker enamel in the middle third and in, also in the in the uh, incisal third. So basically, you will be okay with uh, with uh, enamel preservation or in our not, not dentin exposure, let's say. Perfect, nice conversation. Actually, we are we are one hour talking to each other, and you know oh. this this hour went very fast i enjoyed a lot your knowledge your slides your uh tips and tricks i think if you don't mind we will just answer a few questions from audience because we have some some questions from the audience i know and then we'll answer. finish our uh yeah i'm reading i'm reading the question i, I would like to choose the good one mm -mm, and then do you polymerize first to there is a question but i cannot see all um, letters all words in cementation of veneers do you polymerize first to to take off the axis are you afraid it will leave i don't i don't know what is this when you let's say what is your i'm trying to remove now the question because we cannot see your your face <laughs> we cover the face with a with a with a can you see can you see on my screen the question or not yes yes no, no okay. I, I can see the question I, I think i understood the people are always asking how you start your cementage you bond all the same time you bond one by one first two central incisors the first thing that you have to understand and this is very important. You have to try in your veneers on the stone model to see if you have you can start from the centrals or you made some mistakes in the acts of your preparation or your dental technician. And sometimes you have to start from the lateral. Depend of depends of the path. The pathway of insertion of the model, right? If everything is okay, you can start from two central incisors. And People say it's better to start from central incisors because if you make some mistake, both will be the same. But in my opinion, if you have a cervical line or finishing line well, and if you have everything fit, you can start whatever you want. But if you are a beginner, just starting understand, it's better to start with both central incisors. But for me, just you can place two at the same time if you are in enamel. If you are not in enamel, if you are in denting, sometimes the problem of sensitivity that you waste a lot of time trying to clean everything and you don't like to cure the adhesive or the everything on top denting. And then you have problems. So if you are in enamel, you can 
bond all the same time if you want and then and then. But when in our denting, I would prefer one by one or the first two central incisors. And sure, after you bond, if you are with rubber done, you have to fit the laterals again. You have to check the, the access and then you need magnification. Otherwise, you can have problems. Yeah, completely. Absolutely, absolutely with your protocol. The same. The same. BOPT or chamfer and why? Do okay. you do BOPT? I, I will be. It's difficult when you are not expert. Don't you have expertise in one thing and criticize that thing? It's easy. So I've been doing BOPT in few cases since 2014 when I saw the first time the people in Spain talking about that. So I like BOPT, but in my tools, just for a few cases, which are few cases, cases that I'm redoing old crowns. So I have that big chamfer or big shoulder. So I remove those crowns. Subchangeable crown. preparation with a... With a uh, place biological with violence. Yes, we, we place some uh, clamps and then I fill up with composite and then I do the BOPT. I not do the BOPT to remove the old chamfer or the old shoulder. I will add composite and do BOPT. It's one thing. I try to find BOPT or do BOPT when I want more ferrule in case that I had a fracture. I'm trying to find more ferro. So this is usually what I like. But my day by day, when I perform the first preparation and everything, I will try to do the small chamfer as minimal as possible with magnification and everything. And why? Because for communication to impression, to check, check fit with dental technician is more predictable, okay? But usually, as you mentioned, the dental technician has the chamfer, but sometimes he finish like in knife edge because he over counter a little bit. But the chamfer will be a communication. And for me, 0 0.1 and no chamfer will be almost the same if you preserve the name, as you mentioned. So I would prefer nowadays in veneers, chamfer. And BOPT, yeah. rounds when when... I need to find more for rule, but I'm not expertise. I don't have expertise in BOPT to talk a lot about this. Yeah, same, same. I'm not, I'm not actually performing BOPT. I am a chamfer guy. I'm more uh, the one who wants to have some predictability and to see. And, and I don't feel that I need to do BOPT in veneer cases when we have enamel or whatever. So the small chamfer, as you said, is more predictable, more easier. Is three sixty hundred degrees? No, for veneers you have to remove the enamel, the CJ. So sometimes for me it's too much. So, but if you remove before, it's another stuff. Mm. Because I think yeah. people now is doing new names for BOPT, and they have Borg in Spain. They yeah, have, and uh, you, I saw a lot of a lot of slides and pictures uh, when they highlighted or highlight that BOPD is better than chamfer when they are showing shoulder or chamfer like one millimeter. And then they show BOPT, how beautiful and minimally invasive it is. But if you do properly 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 chamfer, it's almost the same. Even sometimes I think it, it's better. It's more uh, in enamel, it is more uh, conservative sometimes. With some people, sometimes people are really exaggerating this, this, these things. For, but for veneers, again, just to make it simple and easy, uh, for veneers in enamel, I prefer chamfer because it's more convenient and easy. Okay, yes, and Maxi, well, I know, just, just uh, one second. I know that in science... How, how to I remove these questions? I try okay. to do this cross, you know, and it, it doesn't work. I want to see your face. <laughs> okay. I know that in science, I have some microsams or microscopes that we compare chamfer and knife edge. And if you think the interface with chamfer, you have like vertical interface. And then with wear, you have concavity. If you have knife edge, you have the over contour. And sure that to do the maintenance, the chamfer is worst 
because it's concavity and to fill this again it's difficult and the knife edge it's easy just repolish but it's a small line so we can play with this which one is better but nowadays my main protocol with the dental technician it's a small chamfer okay. but we can find answer for everything if you want in science yeah for sure you will have to apply techniques to cases not cases to techniques so you Perfect. have to, be, to think out of the box and to apply all this knowledge to, to exact patient Victor, it was really big pleasure for me and honor to have you here with a live show. Thank you very much for your time, for your efforts, for your knowledge and, and, and passion to dentistry and the way that you share your uh, beautiful and valuable knowledge with all of us. Thank you very much. I think that people enjoyed a lot. So you can okay. see. My pleasure. I, I'm really a big fan from your work. Uh, my sister, Erica, that it's in the... Uh, hello to also. Erica. If she, she is here, I'm, I'm saying hello to your, Erica. Yes, she loves your work. And it's a pleasure to, to add some calm in, in your knowledge. And I hope that soon I can travel again and do your course because your tips are amazing. Thanks so much for your Thanks, opportunity to be with the guys here. Thank you, Victor. Thank you guys for watching Take us. Care. Stay safe and bye-bye.